yes, yeah, this is Offering Something. I am your host, Michael Bernier, feeling so good to be alive. That is the truth. You know this, my friends. I love you, love you, love you for tuning into the show. If you're watching on YouTube, click on that subscribe button for me. Streaming TV, people, we out there. Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Distro TV, all that on the Plymouth Rock channel. Yes, yes, yeah, it's a good day to be alive. That is for sure. We have a perfectly produced episode in store for you today with a guest who is a creative thinker, a producer, an entrepreneur, a visionary, a collaborator, a beast behind the board, a multi-instrumentalist, a part of the hip-hop culture, and a super simple and humble human being. It is with drum rolls from the 808 that I introduce to y'all, Janos Fulop, a.k.a. the Archetype. Yeah, man. What's going on, What's buddy? What's up, man? That was like the most <laughs> epic intro I think I've ever had. Yeah. That was incredible. I feel like I'm coming out to my WWF. You like, are, you know? buddy. <laughs> Welcome to the Coliseum. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I said your name right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Donald that was right, right on the mark. Yes. That's me. All right. So, Archetype. We're going to need some time here, you know, days and days, weeks and weeks <laughs> to get everything out of you. But we'll, we'll try to condense this into our little interview here. So let's scratch beneath the surface like the jizz of wood on this here. So your, your birth name, your full birth name, what is it? Janosch Mackenzie Fulop. That is my full, complete <laughs> birth name. And where were you when you came into this beautiful world? I was in... Manhattan, New York. So that's yeah. where the hospital was. Yep, yep. It was Manhattan. Up, yep, uh, and, uh, upper. Uh, oh, I don't even. I don't even know if it was the upper <laughs> east or west, but the upper uh, yeah, half man. of Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. yeah Good yeah. clean so, air for your first breaths. Yep, yeah. On this exactly. side, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes, indeed. Um, is that where you remained in Manhattan? So I, I was there. My family we stayed there until about uh, I don't know. It was maybe about six years old, I think, and yeah. uh, and then that was like the uh, the eighties. And there was a whole slew of like kidnappings and things that started to happen that my family just got like super freaked by. They were like, I can't do this. I, I can't understand yeah, that. Totally. Yeah. So, and, you know, and I, I have a younger sister uh, who's about four and a half years younger than I am. So when she was born, I think my parents were like, look, we got to get them out of here. We got to raise them in the country, get them some fresh air, you know, all that. So, yeah. so um, uh, my grandfather had a house in uh, Western Mass. And so we moved. Is there up. a specific town in yeah, Western yeah. Mass? Yeah, so, so way far west. So like, way far. So it's it, you know, I, when I came to Boston, and people would be yeah. like, "Oh yeah, I know Western Mass." I'd be like, "Oh really?" And they'd yeah. be like, "Yeah, like Worcester, right?" And I'm yeah. like, "Oh man, nah, no, nah, that's no. like middle." Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I'm talking all the way. So I was like right on the New York border in a small town called uh, West Stockbridge. So West it's, Stockbridge. Yes, yeah, the last. It's the last stop on the pike before you get to New York. Yeah. So I grew up there from about six until college you know hanging the, out in the woods yeah completely hanging out in the woods i mean oh, I, had, I had my neighbors were cows you know wow. so so it was crazy i mean like i have i have early memories of the city yeah but then obviously you know my formative years were were spent out in the fields you so know? were you out there in the fields was, when you first fell in, in love fields. with the 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 hip hop culture, <laughs> like, is that? Were you in the fields when that happened? Uh, was I in a field the moment How? it happened? Uh, no, you know, it's it's t it, obviously out there. It's so rural, and like, and in that time, there was the internet wasn't. You know, it was like. Yeah, so how do you get sucked into hip hop when you live in the states? It was uh, it was interesting because uh, I really wasn't exposed to a whole lot you know it, it took it took a while uh it, it, i was kind of exposed to, there was one channel that had uh a little bit of it but it was all commercialized and that's all you got it was kind of like pop it was sort of like the 94 5 of yep. of of that area you know what i mean <laughs> so you got one flavor of it and if that flavor was to your liking then good you know and otherwise um which it, for me it wasn't really it wasn't you know and I, it just didn't it didn't like your me up, first so. impression of hip-hop was like eh, i was so kinda, much but i could take it or leave it you know yeah. and, and uh i but i grew up falling in love with uh 
with really American roots music throughout all the eras. And then later on in, in, uh, in like early high school, a friend of mine put like how he got to know these artists. I don't know, but he put me on to the roots, Mos Def, Talib yeah. Kweli, like, yeah, you know, uh, the, you know, the Eric Bondu, yeah, yeah, like all that, like, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and, and the Fugees, you know, Wycliffe and, nah, and nah, all that. And I was like, yeah, man, that opened up that my whole world. Cause out. that, when I, when I heard that, I had never heard anything like that. I was like, this is not what I knew hip hop. This to is be. not John Denver. Exactly. This is not, this is not John Denver. <laughs> and this is not, uh, I don't know, whatever was playing on the radio at the time. Mm. So, so it, it, it was, uh, it, it was very eye opening when, when I did, uh, did discover so ultimately those. your homeboy there. What was his name? Like that's my, details. that's my guy, Pablo. Pablo is yeah, the one that, that gave a childhood you the gateway friend. Yeah. So that. Pablo and I were in a band, uh, together early in like middle school or whatever that kind of bled into high school and and he was uh, he was a real source of a lot of musical inspiration for me and he got into hip hop before me and I, I was resistant to it because I, w- I really wasn't versed in like what he I don't yeah. know how he got he had an older he had older siblings so maybe that's how and and he was tapped in with like um you know Modesky Martin and Wood mm-hmm. like yeah he was like real close with with those guys or yeah. whatever that was like family friends of his so yeah, he was man, he was good. tapped into like a kind of a cool like alternative you know and they had so kind of he had an understanding of music yeah, so you were willing to exactly. entertain well, yeah, him telling my, you this is well, hip-hop and it's too, good you know and that was my guy yeah, so like, ah, so IP. he put me we'll on and, this. and he was like yeah you know so that's what it's so Somewhere in there, you mentioned this, and it, it leads into my next question. You play instruments. I do. How did that happen? Well, so my uh, my father banjos out there in the yeah, woods, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, they just they yeah. give them to you when you arrive. Yeah. You know, it's like you got a house oh, oh, here. Here's the banjo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the washboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, my my father's side of the family. He he came from like a musical background. So, uh, like my grandmother, his mother was like a uh, was like a concert, uh, you know, pianist out in uh, yeah. in Hungary because he came over during World War Two wow. as a, as a child. Um, but she was like a concert pianist out there, and and uh, you know was 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 she she was a beautiful pianist, and and she trained my dad a little bit. My dad always had like this love for music growing up, so there were instruments in my house but by virtue of him. Got you. And yeah. so he and he was putting me on from like early early age. I was like just very accessible, hitting bongos uh, yep. and shaking things and smashing on piano keys and whatever was around the house, and you know, right on. You know, so. So, did live performance become a thing with you? You mentioned the yeah. band with Pablo. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah. Pablo and I and a few of the other friends uh, in, in my middle school class, we we started a little band and we started to perform around the area, <laughs> you know. It. And, like, we were playing, like... What were you playing in um, the band? Well, I play guitar in the band. Yeah, like, were you singing it, also? Uh, yeah, I was doing like backup singing. Yep. I wasn't really. Pablo was the lead singer. He Pablo was the lead, was the lead singer. singer. Yeah, Did exactly. he play an instrument? No he instrument. Guitar. No, he played guitar. He played guitar also. Yeah, exactly. Was he playing rhythm? And you were playing rhythm we at this kind, point. We were both kind of playing rhythm, and then we 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 also played lead, but we would trade mm-hmm. off. You know, so it's kind of okay. like you know whatever song was the who's the, on drums. So we had so that was the interesting part. We had <laughs> so uh, yeah. we had Pablo, myself, my buddy Lucas was our bass player. My, yeah. hom- my homie Ian was <laughs> was our keyboardist, and then we didn't have anyone our age who played the drums. So Daddy pa- we had a homie who was like an older guy from the town who was just like this wicked cool dude who like was like you guys kind of rip. I'll play with y'all. <laughs> so it was like these like middle school kids, and then like this forty five year old guy playing drums. And it was he, and people were like, he was the man, dude. He was. What's I love going that guy. on over uh, here now? <laughs> I love that dude, man. He was great. I, I, I what was that dude's it. name? His name was John Snyder. John Snyder. He was the man, dude. He, yeah. he was great. He was a, he was a professor at the local college. So like. Uh, out there was a school called Simon Rock, yeah, Simon's Rock, which is like a, a, a division of the College of Bard, and so yeah. that was like uh, that was our little local college. He was a professor out there, and he was just a wicked cool dude, photographer, musician, and and so just now, now you're out there, of the youth. You're playing music with Snyder <laughs> and the boys. <laughs> we are. Everything's great, and at some point you're like, yo, start making some beats. Well, yeah. So it's interesting, like. We the band needed to record. We needed a demo, basically, to like get better gigs and get more gigs, right? That was I the only just way need to, a demo. We need a demo. We need a demo. Get the gig. You know? So we went into the studio, 
which I was like convinced Whoa. was like the, the you know, but looking back, it was definitely like a dude's kitchen. You know what yeah, I mean? Man. Like I was in standing in we the guy. We still got to record the it. The cutting board was there, you know. The, <laughs> the fridge was there, board. you know. And I'm holding my guitar, and I but it was Rolling a studio. Dough. Yep. So yeah, you know. So, uh, but I fell in love with that whole process. I was like, this is awesome. This is like that because I just thought it was magic. And uh, so then I got my hands on a little like uh, eight track. You know, and like I started a zip disc. It was, uh, yeah. What was it? Yeah, it was a zip disc actually. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, Jesus Christ, I forgot about zip discs. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then actually, I think it, I it, have that. I'm gonna show the, it to it, you. After it had this. the detachable, uh, the upgraded detachable CD burner. It was like one of the Ooh. first ones. It was like you could actually have your music on a CD. It was mind blowing. Wow. You know? But um. But yeah, it was like so. I was, I was working on that, and uh, just started kind of doing some production stuff. And and like I said, I got exposed to uh, to that other world of hip hop, you know, and fell in love with it. And and just started basically creating these tracks that were like I had no idea how to sequence anything, yep. like that, like looping and all that shit. Yeah. It was like, yeah, I didn't There's know no that. I didn't, I didn't know that existed, right? Yeah. And. Um, so well, first, I, I, here, what are you what are you working on? What's the what's the first setup? What are the pieces so, of equipment? I mean, it's like you know, like Casio keyboards yeah. and like my Fender guitar oh, and oh, amp. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, exactly, exactly right. And then like a, a Fender guitar and and like some like hundred dollar bass and you know, Boom. and I was just plugging everything in, you know. And, yeah. And uh, and then and then the 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 centerpiece of it all was a was a. Hold on, were you playing out the beats? Like was a Boss Doctor Rhythm, yeah. It was one of those blue Doctor Rhythms with the orange buttons, and I would literally sit there and hammer out for three and a half minutes the beat to as close as I could get it onto the metronome as possible, and you know, and then layer <laughs> yeah! in the guitar and then layer yes! in the keys. So it was like full three and a half minute I takes. I know exactly of everything. what you're talking about. Oh my god, dude, it was crazy. I mean, I, you know, and of of course the uh, play it out. The, That's yeah, it. The uh, the results had like. Like heavy swing, we'll call it. We'll yeah, call it heavy sometimes swing. you need a little swing, though. <laughs> it was a, it was a totally organic groove. vibe. Yep, <laughs> you know. So nothing Cor- to grit. Chorus was a little different that time. Like, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit. That, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. called flavor. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh man. Exactly. So. As of today, coming from the days of the Casio keyboard and playing oh, yeah, out the yeah. beats, yeah. let's fast forward to things that you've done in your career that you consider major accomplishments yep things that you're proud of that you've done yeah. not necessarily what everyone's like oh my god that's so cool yeah. it's like what what do you what makes you feel good that you've done well um i'd say that the you know the opening of the studio that that i run in cambridge is a, obviously like an ongoing you know it's, it's still open now but th- that existing is a uh, is a huge source of pride for me yep. i mean it's you know it's been now We've we've been there this October will be uh thirteen years, I think, since we moved in. Yep. So keeping something going for over a decade, you know, in the in the, the music. bridge, sound and stage yeah. studio. Yep. That's us. That's how you call it, right? Yep, yep. And yeah, uh man. so yeah, having that having that operational has been super, super source of uh of uh and it's all good pride. people in that building. You can know that for sure. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh so that's one, and then you know, I, on on the on on the uh, sort of production side of things, I'm, there's a lot of little moments, you know, like things that that uh, I've had I've I've had the 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 great opportunity of being first to a lot of things, you yep. know. We I, I was one of the uh, I produced the a song that was the first hip hop song performed inside the United Nations. Um, it was for, say that again. Uh, Just say exactly that again. So me, me and my boys from from Western Mass. I started yep. working with a couple of uh, MCs from back there when I was um, in high school. Uh, we we started making music, and and one of the things we did was we partnered with a local organization from out there yep. called the uh, Railroad Street Youth Project. Okay, and um, we did a we, we did a song for the International Day of Peace, which is September twenty first every year. And it's basically a, a global ceasefire, a day of global ceasefire that the United Nations started. Yep. And um, the idea being that people if people follow that, you know, it's 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 got an interesting it's got an interesting Hold on, following. Don't shoot. It's that day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's it's pretty it's pretty globally recognized. Okay. It's actually pretty amazing. Um, and you know, the awareness of it is is. That that's the part they're trying to work on is, is yeah. gaining more <laughs> yeah. awareness of it. You know what I mean? But, but. Uh, 
you know, so we went down to the United Nations. We created this song, and we were able to perform it inside the United Nations, and we were technically the first hip-hop performance inside the, the halls of the United Nations. There Look been, at this. What you there, there had been things, like, I guess, in the on the steps of the United Nations and things like that, but technically I think we fell as the first inside. You're hearing that correctly right yeah, now. Yeah, it's you pretty are, cool. You are. You are. That's pretty yeah, unbelievable. So, so that's what, you know, that was really dope. You, uh, you know, my, my band Still Gold has had the opportunity to do a lot of really interesting work, you know, uh, announcing an album and doing a listening party at the Museum of Fine Arts. Yeah, um, boy. Our recent partnership with the Boston Symphony Orchestra, um, you know, which is an ongoing relationship for the last move. two years. Yeah, those yeah. things have been really cool, man. And and I don't know, we just, like, that that band has really taken taken on the role of trying to break down barriers and, 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 and lift limitations yep. that have been kind of put on the hip-hop genre, especially in this region. You know, there's a sort of like a... You know, a there's stigma. A, there's there. a stigma, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, it's Maybe a, it's it, not the nicest people. You know, I think they might be violent. Yeah, that's, Maybe they... they they sell drugs. Yeah, this you know they're gonna hurt you. Yeah, yeah, that's how. That's, but it's just like regular people. <laughs> just a like lot of really nice people trying to create the kind of music, music that they're yeah. into. Yeah, and I you're know. like, I can't even hear the words. It's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, it's 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 a tough thing because you you know you, yeah. you do run up against a lot of and you know and not for nothing it's just racially charged. You know uh, that's a lot of it. Yeah, man. But uh, but we've done a lot of really interesting things to kind of break down those walls. So that's cool. Um, and then on you know I was also able to go up on sway. Sway in the morning and my homie, and, I and, love and, and Sway. Play, play some beats up yes. there, which you know was that was a surreal Big up moment. To sway, so, yeah, you know, man. Yeah, so this, those are some of the moments that have uh, been been cool for me. Now, you've worked with some hip hop greats, some icons. I'm just gonna run through a couple of names here to really let this soak in, so people hear what's actually going on here. Moosh, Planet Asia, Psalm One, R.A. the Rugged Man, Rashid Chappelle, Rex, my homie, Rock Ness Monster, Royce the Five Nine, Rusty Jux, Sadat X, Scarface Legend, Sean Price, Sky Zoo, Slain, Smoke Dizza. Oh my gosh, I could keep going on here. I'm going to terminology. Vinny Paz, 38 Special Action, Bronson Apathy. All right, I'm going to slow down, but there's a ton. Ed OG, <laughs> let's go. Helter Skelter, Lil Fame, Cool G, Rap. What? I didn't know that. Yeah, Cool G. You know, yeah. Fast Life. With fat. That's great. Yeah. So, um, of all these artists you've worked with, oh, yeah. you know, like, Who's the one like that you're into? Like A Z might not be like the biggest dude in the world, but working with A Z for me, I'm like, that's I love A Z. Yeah, I hear that. It's you hard. I saying? mean, it's hard. Every one of those artists have brought something else. Don't you give know. me the political. No, no, no answer I'm here. telling you, they, like they really have. Honestly, I, um, yes. But I, I, you know, like I, I gotta say, there was a special place. Um, this doesn't take away from anyone no, else. No, no, of course not. You know? there, there, there were a few special moments, like you know, so so when I worked with Vinny Paz, for example, Vinny, mm -hmm. Vinny. The way that happened um, was kind of a, a long sequence of events, I, you know, but that actually, actually, let me backtrack a little bit. Backtrack, it, back it, it up. It all kind of starts from, from, you know, from, it's kind of a chain, chain of events, but Ducktown Records was a label that I, yep. I, I grew up with. Once I discovered that lane of hip hop, I, I, yep. quick, I quickly discovered Ducktown afterwards and, and loved virtually every act that they had on yep. there. I mean... Just legends, you know, that put out great music from yeah. from Smith and Wesson to Helter Skelter, oh, you know, damn. To, home with the original exactly, gun exactly, man. Home, uh, yes, fantastic, Love dude. It's, that, it's the best, yeah. you know uh -huh. what I mean? Boot camp, click, all that. Oh, so yeah. So, you know, I I I, I randomly emailed rusty jokes one day and was like here's a couple beats i would love to work with you and rusty was sean price's <laughs> underhand yeah, man you know his yeah. right hand man so his understudy yeah and he got right back to me he was like let's do it so we got into it, it let's go we got yeah. into the studio I, I went to new york we got into the studio we did this one song together and he was like i'm working on this other album this other producer right now but you know so i don't know what we want to do with this and i was like well we could put it out as a single but i also brought some other beats let me play them for you so i Whoa. I played him some beats, and he's like, all right, 
I'm gonna do this album with you. Let's do this. <laughs> and so like, yeah, so that became the the focus. And so we did this full length album. We put it out on Duck Down. That was another moment of kind of a pride for yeah, me because man. it was it was a label I wanted. That happened to work right with. in the same yeah. meeting. He was like, "Yo, let's just do this together." It was the same it. meeting. Let's these go. These are so. This is so. We, this you know, is where a, I'm year, at. a year later, we had an album and we brought it to Duck Down, and they were like, "Let's go." What? And then uh, and so then out of that, we worked with an artist named King Magnetic, who was on that record. Yep. And King Mag, you know, he and I started, I sent some beats to him. And, and then one day I, I go on to Facebook, of all places, I go on to Facebook. Here we are. And, yeah. I, and I log in and I have a message from Vinny Paz. And I'm like, wait, that's bizarre. It's going to be like so a I'm, hack situation. What's going on? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I log yeah. in and he's like, yo, uh, King Mag sent me some beats and I want to use this one uh, such, such, such and such, whatever it was called. And I was like, yeah, all right, let's go. Let's go. Let's and like go. I grew yeah. up also listening to Jedi Montrick. Yeah, so Vinny yeah. Paz for me was like that I can't even believe I'm getting this You're email like, well, right I'm now. I'm just happy to be talking to you over a messenger. Yeah, right. So yeah. then he he, <laughs> he 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 record he goes on his way, he records this track. I don't hear from him for like, I don't know, maybe a couple months. He was working on whatever album he was, you know, yeah. it was God of the Serengeti was the album that he was working on. And like, should uh, I hit him up? What should and, I do? Yeah, I just you know, yeah, but I just I don't want to bother you, so I just let it sit, you know. And he hits me back one day with an email that just goes, by the way, Scarface is on the joint. That was the whole email. And I was like, uh, this is bananas. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, wait, this I just went from this just went yeah. from Jedi mind tricks and like my childhood and high boys, school to like man. ghetto boys and oh Scarface. God. And I'm like, this is bonkers, you know? Wow. And so, so, uh, so I'd say that's another one that just like, for me, like, you know, started with wow. Vinny. Vinny was already enough in the first place. And then to, nice. and then for him to yes. double down with Scarface, I was like, this is ridiculous. You that know? is and ridiculous. So, yeah, so that's another, and then like yeah, Royce the Five Nine is another that you know I, I was able to work with by virtue of my my uh, production partnership with Frank the Butcher. Mm-hmm. Like he and I do do this uh, production group called uh, Cooking to Kill, and we've done a couple projects and some little Lucy's and and uh, and one of the songs was a song with uh, Avenue, an artist from Boston, and uh, Royce the Five Nine hopped on that and Ooh, and because uh, he's good it. he's good friends with Frank and yeah, it's I mean Royce is right now one of my favorites out there. So I mean a lot of people say that yeah he's. Yeah. Just, he's just such a beast. I mean, he and like yeah, Black man. Thought are like, you know, just gunning at it. They're at each other's throats, just trying to like, like putting the time move. in yeah. to write something that yeah, like crazy is, bars, yeah, crazy man. bars. So. I fully yeah. agree with you on all of that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> in a normal situation, let's explain the process here. You go in the studio, right? You make a beat, mm-hmm. and now you have a beat, and you want to present that to an artist. Yeah. Let's talk about. What's the, is it everyone's coming to you saying, hey man, when you got beats, let me know. Or do you, when you have a new beat, do you have a pool of people that you like say, hey, yeah, here, I, mean, I just dropped a new beat in this folder? It's, it's changed over the years. You know, okay. it's like I used to, I used to hunt down a lot of like placements as they're called, you know, um, which basically would be like cold calling you. People like yeah. Rusty Jokes, you yeah, know, and like, trying to create a hey relationship. Yeah, beats, can yeah I, can exactly. You? Trying to trying to build a relationship I'll based on you. yeah, <laughs> based on just you, you know, can pay me if you want cold calls and, e- and emails, you know. So uh, that I kind of took a step back from that because it, it's it's kind of its own serious hustle and rat race yeah. trying to do that because you know you're in the the you know there's thousands of dudes doing that yep. you know and so kind of got to a point where i was like man this is taking a lot of energy and you end up sitting on these beats for like months because someone would be like yeah i think i want to use that and then like you're sitting there like four months later like so did you use it are you gonna use it like hey what's up man i'm not trying to send it to anybody else because you expressed interest but like so you know it just it it turns into this like waiting game and this like rat race that i just got kind of exhausted with you're like too much administrative work here Lacking fulfillment. Yeah. Carry and, on. And I just found myself putting out less music. Yeah. As a waiting for of, people to like get back to me, you know. And I, I yeah. was like, the, a year would go by, and I, I will have only put out like a few songs because yeah. all these things because are kind of musicians are lazy, right? Well, not even that. Hip hop is angry. You know, and musicians <laughs> are lazy. <laughs> no, it's just more like 
people just you know there's a lot of things get lost in the cracks you know so yep. so nowadays really honestly I, I i i just you know i try to make i i love to make music for whoever it is i'm working with on the spot at this point i really like yep. to be in the studio with an artist and make it for them right there that examples right now who are you in the studio with well Sl- i mean slain someone i'm working with regularly you yep, know yep, um, yep. Hey, it's my go and then still gold is my band and we're in there doing that all the time so you know those I are love t- it. those are two like of my pretty main much focuses, always yeah. going on in there those are slain kind of perpetually happening we love slain yep. and then still gold we love I appreciate and, it. and then you got like some one-off kids coming through there yeah, for singles exactly. that yeah, you're doing yeah. tracks for people that hit you up and like hey i could use a Absolutely. beat i want to record a, a song and there's a whole network of people that yeah. i've worked with yeah. and and then people i get acquainted to yeah. by virtue of other folks and you so, know I, and so it feels like a much more organic natural way of building yeah, with people, man. which i just prefer that man it's just like it's more person to person more okay. like personal so recommendations this, and all that you know so, so with let's say like two examples here with an artist like Slain, listens to the beats. He's like, yeah, man, I know you guys are like homies always working together. That's the beat I want. Is he then recording it in your studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, and then it's recorded there. Are you mixing and editing? Yep. And are you also the mastering engineer? Yep. Okay, you yeah, play. Yeah, I'm, just a lit, I'm, I'm just a control freak. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm, I'm seeing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing like, now. I just like because you so know you're, it's, like, you're not even ready. Like somebody's like, ah, oh, give me the session files. You're like, nah, nah, yeah, nah, 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 I don't, I don't love it. Boy. I don't love it. I don't love. I'm doing not that. feeling good about that. I don't like doing that. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I, I'm really like because I like I, the whole thing is this like it's you know like I I don't just make a I, I kind of make a beat to the point where it's like. I don't know, maybe 70, 80, 80% done. That's what I was going to say. And so then, this and further then I give it to the, give it to the artist to like, so, cause I don't want to dictate too much. I right. just want to give them enough to like inspire them and then, and it's then like, let oh, them oh, do their go. thing and have, have enough freedom to like not be, you know, fully manipulated by the fact exactly that you have that. Well, distorted this is where guitars this thing coming in and here. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. exactly. And so, um, and then based on what they do, I like to then change the work and adapt it to what they've done vocally and try to really sculpt it into a song. And Sometimes so, they'll come back and there'll be a whole new beat break over one this section. Is, exactly. So yeah. this is the thing. It's like, so so the idea of handing it off is really hard for me because it's yeah. like, I, it's like it, it, during the mixing process is when I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This all oh, needs to happen. You know, boy, it's like right here. We don't even exactly, need to be. Exactly. This is going to be strings right here. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to change a thing. That's what oh, I mean. And there's, there's no way I could, I, I, I would never be at the point where I'd feel like, okay, this song is, is, is ready to hand to somebody else to just right. mix because it's like, well, no, because during the mixing, I'm going to realize that all this other stuff Ooh, needs yeah. to happen. And So you're kind of there with your paintbrush like throughout the process yeah. and sitting back listening like, oh, yeah, I'll we'll bring it back. Yeah, because oh, right. there there will be changes that happen literally right before master. Yep. I mean, that's just how it goes. You know? How about this? Have you um, put together – curated your own albums are there the archetype albums that exist where you've got all the artists to <laughs> so rap on your beats I've started and here it a is. couple of those you, so you never finished though never boy finished a minute that's it's not like, really like so you you're it, a highly motivated individual well, you know what, you do it is, what you're man, gonna say it, it, what's up here it's 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 interesting because it's like you know they they always balloon into these bigger things you know what i mean and then and then what inevitably happens and slain is never a, good enough for and, you and slain yeah. is guilty of this is yeah. uh Someone will come along and fall in love with a song that we made for my record and be like, you know, that really should be on my record. Because uh, it, you no, know. <laughs> no, 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 no. And Slane did this to me. And he oh, was, he, that he is what's your boy. And he was one of the ones what are who you undercut, doing? He undercut Mr. me. Mr. Carroll. He undercut me. He undercut me. Because wow. one of the songs, the song that, uh, there was a song that He's was sorry. on, uh, <laughs> that was on the Slane is Dead EP. No that was to supposed be on to the be, album. Yeah, it was supposed to be on my album. And he's like, bro. You know, if it goes on this album, it's really gonna get heard. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> so, you it's know, probably the best decision so, right here, man. You know, so what are you Let's gonna do? He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I'm yeah, really I've got a couple things. You. I got a couple things kicking around that, like, I should just wrap up and finish up. And it's crazy. I do have who, a couple like, albums. So, who are some of the artists that? So, in reverse here now, because you've been talking yeah. about people take your beats, they don't do nothing with yeah, them. So, yeah. you've recorded tracks oh, yeah. with cats that are I've just sitting there. They're like, I've "Yo, been that, yeah, I've been that bro, guy. Bro, what's good? I've been that guy." 
Okay. Who, and, and I've had who's to, sitting there in the closet like, yeah, so, I, I mean, did that track with you two years ago. It was yeah. pretty dope then. But I mentioned something about a guy yeah. who ain't even president anymore. Yeah, I, de- I mean, I terminology, oh. uh, esoteric, black stin. <laughs> uh, who else do I got in there? Um, a bunch of like you know, and some of those guys. I think I think Esso. I think I actually think the Esso verse. He, he ended up telling me that he was like, yo. Yeah, I use that verse. I use that verse, bro. <laughs> That's bro, happened I got a couple this, like, times. Six so. month limit. Yeah, and, and yeah, I'm yeah, using yeah. the verse. It was funny. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's things, some things sitting around, you know? Yeah. I, had, I mean, not for nothing, I had a Helter Skelter track sitting around for a while, and that ended up becoming a Still Gold song on, uh, on our last record. Oh, yeah? Because I had this verse. I've been. Prior to Sean's passing, uh, he came up to Boston. We did this. We, he did a verse for me on something, and then Rock and I have, have been close for for a while and done a lot of tracks together. So I got Rock on it, and it was I was building it up. I was actually trying to make it initially. It was gonna I was gonna try to do a uh, Hell to Skelter MOP track because they oh, had never yeah. technically done a full like M, the like both Billy and Lil Fame yep. and Rock and Helta yeah. or, uh, and Rock and Sean together as there's the, been three of them exactly but never as actually far been, as I'm yeah. aware there had never been an actual I could see that yeah, so I was yeah, like yeah. I'd like to do that you know but it just one thing led to another and it just never ended up happening you know and, and yeah. Billy's a tough one right now to get on to get on records that aren't his own you know How about this you've had a lot of your music featured in television oh yeah 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 so sure. what's up with that lane? What's going on there? Give me a rough number. How many times have programs oh, picked man, up your that music? That number's crazy. I, I don't, crazy I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know. I mean, it's like pages of placements because it's like one pages. one song. One song. Kid, be, how do you get pages? What does that mean? A thousand, six hundred, seven million. What? I mean, it's it's in the hundreds. thousands for it's in sure. The thousands it's in the of thousands. Songs. Yeah, each quarter. Yeah, I mean, because it's like no, it's it's hundreds of songs. It's like six hundred, okay. six hundred, okay, okay, seven hundred okay, okay, songs, okay. but then one song will get placed in you know. 30 different shows I and, gotcha. and so yeah, then that, the yeah, sheets yeah. of the placements are just like end up being long as hell and they you know they range <laughs> you know so it's like some are really cool like big things and then some are like you know little tiny 15 second Instagram videos yeah. and things yeah, that are like man. whatever but but it's, it's, all, been, it's all humans on the other end it's all humans on the other end yeah. and, it's, and it's been a good thing man I mean those things have really helped uh keep me in music you know financially speaking you know yeah. it's like music's not an easy checks thing to come make. in exactly you need checks you know that's a pretty yeah. everyone in this world needs checks yeah. from somewhere <laughs> so and, some people uh, think you're sitting there doing nothing no nah. you're just a guy doing nothing and these checks are coming in was there any work involved in the process of getting <laughs> your music first from your brain and then out into some sort of audio kind of tangible form and then getting it to somebody who can pr- Present it to these yeah. programs. Well, so that's that was that's another interesting story. Is that like the, and the, interest it, me? And, and it, it go it goes back to the duck down situation again. Was yeah. that um, before I did the album with Rusty and 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 we and we you know and and did the album that came on came out on Duck Down? They they did this little producer challenge that I entered. In an effort to try to glean their attention and glean, yeah, you know, and just, check and, me out, y'all. Yo, I'm all right, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and so it was I this whole like, in your area. make a sample free yeah. beat, and you know, it could be used in a video game, right? So yep. I, I, and this was back in like 2000, um, it must have been in like 2010, I would say, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark, and um, so I entered the com- competition, and I was in the top ten. So they, they 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 featured me and did the whole thing, and I was like, okay, cool. From that, I got an email from someone who was like, I'd love to talk to you about publishing and licensing. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's have a conversation. And this guy was just some dude from New York. And he was like, look, man, uh, I I really love your work. I like, I heard from the duck down thing. I heard you. And then I went and checked out some more things and Uh it's clear, you know what you're doing and you know how to make sample free music. That's licensable because you know, you can't, if if it's full of samples, you can't, you know, why have those hurdles? Why have the extra steps? So he's like, and you make music that's, uh, that's engaging. Like it's, it's, it's real, you know, it doesn't sound like chintzy keyboard beats, you know, down like, you know, and at that time, 
there weren't a lot of like because we're talking about 2010 ish somewhere in 2009 10 there weren't a lot of people making sample free stuff at that point it really it wasn't it, it was a much smaller pool than it has now become yeah man it was a heavy sample time yeah exactly yeah. so especially so with I like kind the, of, yeah. i kind of stood out because of that like so so there was this flexibility of what you could do with the tracks and they sounded like they had samples like that was my whole thing was yeah. to try to make the stuff sound like it had samples but really not you know and uh, so he's like, look, I, I'm, I'm starting a company. I'm literally, you'd be the first person I'd sign, and I'd like to take a shot. You know, would you be down to jump hey. in with me and, like, whatever? And, and, like, you know, he was so he was so transparent and so honest from jump. I was yep. like, I kind of like this guy. Like, he's not promising me the world. He's literally like, I hey, don't man, know. I'm well, taking I, a little you know, risk here. Like, we're, yeah, all, like, we're all in hey. this together. And, and like, he, he, just, he, just, he just really was, he was a straightforward, straight shooter with me. So. I, so I, I jumped in with him, and we did some things, and he brought me some work right away. We got some stuff. Well, and, so. and that was about 10 years ago, and I'm still working with I talked to him today. <laughs> what was this his guy, name again? This guy's name is Adam. He's uh, Adam. a really good friend of mine Not at this gonna point. Not going to give his last name? It's Adam Brostoff. His, Adam Brostoff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Adam. And yep. uh, his his uh, his company's Perfect Time Publishing, and I've been working with him now for a decade. And, Perfect uh, Time Publishing. Basically, I'm be hitting he, you up to connect me with Mr. Brostoff. I tell you, he... he, uh, he hustles all this work for me and he you know and it's, so it's this beautiful partnership where he's able to basically make money off the work i do and i'm yep. able to make money off the work yeah, that, the way that he places it and it's just a super amazing symbiotic it's relationship exactly and, what you want and that's a partner that uh that has really and also kept me in this industry i mean at times when my back was against the wall financially and things were looking ugly that dude pulled through you know whatever needed to happen to get me some He's money like, oh, you know, I'm gonna he was hustle like, extra I got you don't worry I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get you paid I'll right lean, now I'll you know and, yeah. and he did it and like yeah. you need people in your corner that way that's like, yeah. the only way you can stay in this thing you know and so he's a great dude what do you dislike I don't I don't mean to bring up anything negative here yeah, okay. but what no, do you yeah. dislike about I guess I do mean to because I'm doing it what do mm -hmm. you dislike about the Boston hip hop scene um the Boston hip hop Archetype. scene. Yeah, man. Is there anything frustrating? It doesn't have to be like. I mean, you know, I think it, it, it's it's not so much necessarily um, a dislike about the scene. It's a frustration. Frustration. It, that I, I, I what's frustrating? So what's you, frustrating archetype. is that that truly I I have you know I listen to everything that that comes out you know from not just this city or or just just nationally you know like and in hip hop we're talking about yeah, yeah 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 and uh i truly believe that this city has the some of the best artists nationally that we that i've heard i mean i just i haven't heard a city you really believe I that i truly because believe because a lot that. of people would say you've lost your mind right i'm telling i well you I, believe I, that. I don't know i don't know if they at this point i really don't know i'm not saying that i'm just telling you for some reason boston doesn't really get that respect and that's my frustration there it is that's my frustration so I because like, i really got right to the button. I, I really got to say it's it's like it's mind blowing to me because I'm I'm so impressed by the caliber of music that comes out in the hip hop. I mean, in all the genres in Boston. Who are the but monsters? Who are you talking I mean, about, man? Like, dude, like the Trail James is yeah. just like super problematic. Like this guy is just like <laughs> it's like he's just too good. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> What are we gonna do with this? This is literally how I feel when I think, like, when I hear oh, the next thing he drops. I'm like, what are we gonna do with this dude? You know what I mean? God, this um, is coming quick. It's yep. cr that's what I mean. And it's yep. like, you know, then you, you know, I mean, we're, we're starting to see some. I will say, we're starting to see some people. Obviously, the Stizzes and the Millies and the Bias are starting to get their shot, which I'm happy about. I love the Millie stuff. Oh, I, I love Millie's. Sure, man. Man. Millie's is the dude. That's I love. Man. I love that dude. He's yeah, such a man. great guy. Yep. <laughs> but uh, but I just, I, I really truly believe. I mean, there's a kid named Najee Janey, and I. Don't don't, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him or not. No, I'm not. And so Najee is like, he debatably straddles the lines between hip hop and R&B, and like he sort of lives in both worlds. Okay. I'd say equally. I know what you're saying. But there. this dude is just another one of these like, who, who is this? Like, you know, who are you? What are you doing? You know, and and then you have the Oompas and the Dutch Rebels. Yeah. You know? And uh, you know, it, it, it's just in the red shades, and the, like there's there's all these artists that are just doing such interesting and different work that's the yeah. other thing it's you know there was a point in time when there was only one flavor of hip-hop that that could be accepted in the city of boston and right now that's just not the case oh, there's yeah. so many different things happening and it's so it's so uh refreshing 
But what is frustrating is like, you know, and that's part of the reason I'm able to listen to almost exclusively Boston artists and be like, yeah, this is great. I don't need to listen to anything else. But I just feel There's like enough here, guys. It's it, it, all right. I, I feel like Boston is due its its limelight again. You know, there was there was a point in time when uh, Boston was getting the limelight in the sort of boy band R and B pop. You know, yeah. you know, back with New Kids on the Block and all that. Yeah. That era when like you could get signed if, if, you were, if you were in a collective. Like, oh yeah, Boston's a place. Let's check out what's going That's on what over I mean. there. It's got to be I, somebody else riding up on those tails. And obviously, the rock tales. world as yeah. well was produced. Yeah. a lot of really great acts you yeah. know Aerosmith I, I, exactly Extreme. yeah, yeah. You know, the Pixies all that like yeah. you know Dinosaur Jr Buffalo Tom Whoa. all these all these big heavy hitters in the rock Dropkick world Murphy. I think yep. I feel like we're due a little hip hop time here you know I think yeah. we're, we're in a moment where a national the city's deserving and the region is deserving of national rec- recognition yeah. on the hip hop side so that's my frustration I would say okay I mean that paired with you know it. the uh, the, inst- you know, the racial inst- inst- the institutionalized racism that's built in <laughs> that's frustrating too. So <laughs> yes, I mean, let me not glaze over that, but you know, but uh, but yeah, I think Boston's do its shine at this point. Um, do you like to receive gifts, like gifts? Uh, yeah, like I mean, gif- present gifts are great. <laughs> they are. <laughs> gifts are fun. Comfortable if I give you a gift? Sure. This is all right with you. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is highly unexpected. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Look at this. It's like wrapped up and everything. My gosh. Yeah, man. So wow. here it is. The goody, goody, goody box. Man, look Just at this. Just a couple of things for you, you know? Oh, shit. Here we go. Look Here we go. This. Let's pull them out one at a time. Woo. Let's see them out in the look open. At this. Oh, yeah, man. We got the enjoy. Seven panel enjoy your life hat. This, is, this is actually hat. great. I've been needing one. I'm going to swap this out. Right this, there, one's little, man. this one's a little beat that Whoa. I'm wearing, so I'm going to have to swap that out right away. Much love to enjoy yeah. your life. Enjoy your life Indeed. brand everywhere. Oh, yeah, oh great, yeah man. That feels great. Looking good, Ark. I must say, right, involvement music got you that tank top. Oh, I know you're hitting the gym, player. Fire, yeah. I know you're hitting the gym. Well, you know, it's also <sighs> summertime, so yeah, you know man. it's been I don't know 450 degrees out uh, out mm-hmm. in uh, Boston these days. No so what is this? Is this tomato sauce? So that's some that's some pizza <laughs> sauce right there. You know, <laughs> this, tr- is, this is highly unexpected. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? That's awesome. So Tresca, the North End Dope. in Boston, right? You know, yeah, of my course. homie Ray Bork. Over there, That's what's we up. were working on something. I like and it. Didn't that. happen, but <laughs> but hey, we got some sauce got for some you. Pizza sauce right? out of you, know it. you know, it didn't happen, but we got some pizza sauce. That's it. Nice. You got yourself a to nice, go, bright, go with enjoy your hat. life shirt. There we go. I like that. What else is in man, there? Gifts, man, man, this is so. That's, a, oh, that's like a you know a neck gator for when oh, you're out on the boat. Excellent on Make the sure boat. Make sure you don't get, get on the, the sun boat. Yeah, the boat. That boat I own. That's right there. That's my new my. It's not even new anymore. It's a year old. Uh, Enjoy well, Your Life yeah, album, COVID and that's the did, band the, right there. The pandemic never happened, so it's You're going to know new. a lot of people on this Enjoy on, Your on, Life on, album. On, on yeah, this one. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. The All contrast right. is oh, weak shoot. on purpose. Look at that. Hell yeah. 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 That's dope. Nice so, work. Excellent, yeah. bro. That's great. Man, thank you, man. What else we got in here? We got. I don't know. Oh, this oh, is... Oh, CNA stores, Haverhill, Massachusetts, Amesbury, boom, Mass. Boom. Keep it smelling good. Couple stickers. Cover up the cannabis, some Enjoy Your Life stickers. Oh, oh another man, one of those I'm Saisons drinking one of for these you. right now. A tripler. Oh, Whoa. yeah. Riverwalk Delicious. Brewing, boom, we love boom. you. Shouts you to know them. that. That's what's oh, like, gosh. Look at this, man. I oh, didn't, golly. I, I didn't yeah, expect like, this. this is you know, up. something about gifts it's makes people nice, feel man. good. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't matter if you're receiving them. I get the same yeah. feeling. Yeah, or giving them. Maybe it's selfish of me to give you gifts. If that means anything. You kind of uh, see what I'm saying. I, I, enjoy, it. I enjoy it a lot. Um, let's talk about, as far as the beats that you're making, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it that differentiates your beats from other people's beats? Like, and, and I know we, we touched on how you put the extra effort in yeah, towards yeah, yeah. the end, the final stretch to really turn it into. But there's this point yeah. of where that hasn't happened and right. people are listening to raw beats. And they seem to be leaning towards yours. Why does that happen? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what you, do you know, you know, I, like I, uh, I've been told that uh, that I have a uh, 
a flair for the cinematic. A That's flair it. for the cinematic. You know, that my stuff is, is Have you is, said that before? No, I've never actually said that line before. That was the <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just tried that for the <laughs> It was like I was like it's 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 normally a flair for the dramatic. Yo, that's my man archetype right there. <laughs> this dude, show he has the flair for the cinematic like you never seen. Big screen boy. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, like, I often hear, I often hear that my work sounds cinematic. You know, it's like, yep. you know, people can see it as, as a, as a, you know, as a soundtrack or whatever. So, and, not entertained. yeah. So, you know, it's, and it's funny because sometimes that works against me. Like, there'll be times when it's like, man, I'm just looking for that, like, just that raw, just <laughs> like, like that visceral some mob thing, and I'm kinda. like, yeah, you know, and then I'm like, yeah, and then I, my inclination is like, yeah, but what if we then put this like ominous, you know, <laughs> and I I'm build it make in. this thing a monster but, anthem, anthem. But yeah. I, mean, I don't know, man. I think, I think, uh, I, I think, think you, you don't have to say anything else after saying, yeah. The flair I mean, for I, that, the maybe that's maybe that's what makes people, you know, drawn towards it. Um, I don't know. I think, I think, I think there's just. After after doing anything long enough, you, you sort of learn what your skill sets are yep. and what your you know what your 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 power plays are, your power moves, and you can lean into those things, you know. And uh, I don't know, I don't you know that's the best I got is. That's so. that's great, man. And once you said the flair for the cinematic, I didn't need to hear anything right, else perfect. out of all right, your good, mouth. Right, so. I, honestly, I was already <laughs> satisfied with where we was, went there. So, <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think about this. It's your life, right? You you grew up. You did all the things you yeah. did. Uh-huh. You 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 have your own thoughts that bounce around in oh, your yeah. head, your own ideas. Oh yeah. And you have the option to either turn those thoughts into something that happens mm-hmm. in real life, mm-hmm. or you just let them be thoughts and now oh, that's not real. And then you go do whatever you go get some other job. Mm-hmm. So what do you think it is in you that allowed you to take, Hey, I want to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and sell beats and make an, and yeah. hold on. My head considers this an option. It's a reality right, 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 actually right, right, right. that you can yeah. start a business out of your little wacky mind yeah. and make it real, pay the bills, pay some other people, eat food and yeah, totally. all these things. Well, I think, I think the first piece of it for me was both my parents are self-employed. So okay. like I grew up in a household that, you know, and as, as a kid, like I was saying this to you earlier, like yeah. as a kid, you don't know anything about it's just like your house like yeah that's, you just, that's the world that's just the family that's the world yeah. you're in right yeah. like you so you don't recognize you know when when i'm 10 years old i have no understanding that my father is self-employed versus working for someone right he's just working no gauge yeah right i know when i know when he's working and i know when he's playing <laughs> with me those are the two things i know <laughs> right so yeah. um so i think as you go through high school and then you get into college and you start to like or or that just that period of time whether you go to those things or not you start to like take all of a sudden take a look and take a little stock in what you what what you grew up in what the circumstance right. was that you grew up in oh. and and i feel like either say there's things i like about this and i want to replicate mm-hmm. or i don't want any of what this is you know what i mean like so if 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 you see your parents working a cubicle job nine to five slaving away and that turns you off then maybe that's the thing that pushes you in the direction right for me seeing that my family had this ability to sort of create their own schedules and work and, you know, while on vacation I in mean, Turks and a, Caicos, a, a great, well, no, <laughs> never been to Turks and Caicos, but yeah, it sounds great. Um, no, but like I, you know, for example, um, and you know, my dad never missed a single one of my basketball games when I was growing up. Right, because he could just because do he could just he, he was like, I'm going yeah, to see the I'll game now, and I'll go work afterwards. Yeah. He, he didn't have a boss; he had to, yeah. you know. And I didn't understand that until later on. And you didn't actually realize that throughout this process, this, your father's behavior was, it's just a credible option in your mind. You're like, right. well, that's what well, you can he, do. If he can do it, then yeah, I like, guess I can, right? That's what you're firsthand. It's, so working for yourself exactly. is the more it, normal it, it's thing It's a viable to you. option. Now yeah. my dad's an architect. Not like, let's jump out of whatever yeah. into the entrepreneurial world. Totally. Okay. So my father's an architect and my mother's a therapist. They are not 
hip hop beat makers by yeah, by nah, I gotcha, <laughs> so, I gotcha, so there is yeah. still a moment of like okay so what is this son they call it the hip hop <laughs> you know and and what I, I was very fortunate to have parents that were hopping. that were highly supportive of yeah. of my of my desire to get into the music industry because which they Which, see that you can succeed as an entrepreneur because yeah, they're and, doing it themselves. Exactly. And and so I was very blessed in having the support system yeah. that wasn't pushing, like saying, like, are you crazy? You can't do that. You got to go get a job. Let's you know what job. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So I, I wasn't met with that. So I had the reinforcement there. And uh, so that's one of the big pieces. I, then I think there is this piece of like um, just sort of like, I mean, I, I do it to myself. I, like, I you know, I have these internal conversations about like okay like you said a little a little idea will pop yeah. up like okay you should open up a studio of your own and i'll be like <sighs> and then you go like, oh, I gotta do that. well that's crazy you're like yeah. nuts for that like why would you ever say something like that and then you're like because like that happened when i was working at a studio right i, yeah. work, I was working at a studio and i enjoyed working at that studio but i saw this thing made no sense i was like why are we doing it that way yeah why is that happening that way why is that happening that way? Why don't we do this systematically differently? Because that would work better. You know, and I'm seeing the problems and I'm like, hey, if I just did my own, I could fix those things. And then I'm like, yeah, you're crazy. Man. Don't, what are you talking about? You're crazy. And then, you know, it just sort of mulls back and forth, you know, and flips over 17,000 times yeah. until, until it kind of turns. It's like, like, you know, those, uh, the rock tumblers that then all of a sudden make your rocks into these like really shiny, beautiful. Yeah, smooth. I do it's, know that. That's actually, kind of, that's kind of like the idea. Actually, yes. You know, it's sort of like the idea just like throws around a whole bunch of times until like you finally come out and yeah. you're like, this is kind of a cool idea, and I, I think, think this I could work. You know what I mean? I and, 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 and 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 I and I brought that in the case of the studio. I brought that to uh, a former professor <laughs> of mine. Little, yeah. Well, because I mean, I, I, it was a professor of mine from Emerson who I just got along Not really Schneider. well. Not Schneider. But I, I went back to him and I was like, hey, man, like, you have any idea, you have any desire to open up a studio that's a little bigger than the project studio you got in Central Square? And he was like. Yeah, well, I do have to leave that place because Ooh. the lease is running. But, like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm thinking a bigger spot, you know? And he's like, all right, we'll find a place and then we'll talk. And so then I found the place and he's he, he walked in. And he's like, dude, you're crazy. You know what I mean? It's like, what are you talking about? You're like, I'm kind of talking about taking over the world at a very relaxed pace. You see, and that's the, yeah. yeah. You know, and, but, but oddly enough, that was a, that was another funny story because the the space that the bridge actually is – my first business partner, who's now he's still kind of in the wings, but he's he's not as involved anymore. Um, he um, it was his f the place that he took his now wife of I don't know fifteen years or yeah. something twenty years on their first date because it was it was a recording studio. It was the last location of Fort Apache, which was a kind of historic recording studio yeah, like yeah. in Boston. Had three locations, wow, and they did th they did a partnership with WFNX where they'd bring bands in in the afternoon that were like touring. So it's like David Bowie performs at, at my studio wow. the day that he performed at the garden. He performed an afternoon show at my studio and like it, it, it radio heads performed there. We actually, <laughs> we've heard the radio head performance is really cool. So like, so, this was this, something, so man. the artist that he took her to see, like he, he had tickets. It was like her favorite art. I forget who it was. I don't even remember who yeah. it was. It was like some singer that she loved. He had, he got tickets. He was playing at the Wang, I think, and 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 he uh, he found out that he was doing an afternoon show. Yeah. So he got her out of work early and took her there. So he's like, "This is technically the first wow. date location that I took my wife." And my wife's gonna like this. And so yeah, so he's I like, "I gotta consider. go home and talk to her." And, she's like, and yes, it's and her sorry. response was like, "I don't know how I can tell you no. That's what that's, <laughs> that's, where, it the, that's where this all started." So terrible you know. idea. Everything since then has been horrible. <laughs> <laughs> just not it's everything bad starts there yeah <laughs> so yeah you know it's it's one of those things and and, and so you, you i don't know you, you know these little ideas turn into <laughs> polished ideas that then have things attached to them that are totally out of your control so so amidst all of these things that you have going on mm -hmm. you're touching in all these little worlds all these different lands when you sit and think about this 
what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what's the goal here? And that's shit. Not even, don't even <laughs> restrict yourself to industry and career. Yeah. Like, what's the goal? Like, what are we, what are we trying to get at here? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, what's the point? I think for me is just trying to set myself up to live a sustainable life that I'm happy in, you know, because I, I what I will say is after all these years of doing this, yep. When I have the time to sit down in front of the keyboard and just play music and make something that is just from me and just do that, that has not changed since day one. That is Didn't exactly exist. now it does. And, and, yeah. and that experience is is as potent as it was when I first started. Like yep. it just it just is still there. It's just like and it, it creates a visceral. It's like that is the the greatest yeah. therapy I've ever had. I fully understand yeah. you and, and so, love and, you for and, saying and this. And so for me mm. to be able to create a sustainable career and lifestyle where I can continue to do that as my main focus is always going to be that's the goal that's because that, that because that puts my happy in doing something that yeah gives it puts you my happiness joy. first you know it puts yes. my pri- you know that's makes happiness my priority which well, is happiness really, is a part of your goal system here yeah that's it's I mean it's the, the ultimate it's it I is. mean it's the ultimate I think because you know at oh, the end of the day don't take my surprise as anything it's not everyone's goal Ask I a just lot of people I think what man the point I, th- is I think at the end of the day like if I if if I can be happy my whole life then that's a super successful that's life that's pretty good you know what I mean and I'm not saying I am happy in my whole life but I'm saying you know, try, 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 yeah. try to make that the goal, right? Well, you have a good way about you. You seem like you're happy. Uh, you know, for the most part, I am. Life throws you curveballs, you know what yeah. I mean? So there's, so there's some more bumps well. along the way. I try. I try. You stay even. I try. I, I try. I don't really see you as a guy that loses control. Is that yeah. something that happens? It, it does occasionally, but yeah, you but know. But not punching walls or doors. I did punch a wall recently, believe wow. it or not. <laughs> I did. Miss I weed did. over yeah. here. I did. I actually sprained a wrist doing it. But what? Uh, you punched the wall and sprained your wrist? Yeah, I did. I how, did. How long ago was this? This was like two months ago. So wow. L- life has thrown me some curveballs in the in the recent years. So, wow. so in the recent know, it's, months. It's, it's, uh, it's been a thing. But but that being said, uh, you know what 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 also comes out of that is 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 also uh, perspective on on what your goals are, right? So that's why like, happiness is really raised to the top of, oh, yeah. of, of my goals you know it, when happy coming not out of the, spraining wrist yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. you know out of the last couple of years of, of curveballs that have been thrown my way um happiness has gotten a lot higher on that list you know That's what it may not may not have been the top priority before right. you know financial Take stability money, you know, you know, you know? Till the day I die. You know? but if i yeah. can be happy then that's 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 the top priority and then obviously like i said a sustainable career and then one that that also feels like i left a mark and was able to give back to people that's a big thing for me is i want to know that like people felt that um knowing me was impactful to them in some yeah. way, you know. What, it the footprint didn't have to change Not their an life. Egotistical, no, boastful way. Just simply in a way like that you know that the, all the effort that you put I in. I just want to feel like I contributed yeah. to people. That's all. In you know, honest, to, to bettering genuine, them. You know, what yeah. I mean? and bettering their life experience. You know what I mean? That's that's important to me. Top five, dead or alive. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, top five, dead or alive. Okay, let's go. And this is like. Just no go. restrictions. Just no go. restrictions. All Everything. Right. Here H- we go. Top five. Hendrix, dead or alive. Hendrix. Yep. Num- number one. I'm just gonna go on the record what? and say it. <laughs> <laughs> My guy. You. Ace. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, yeah, Hendrix number one. Um, like to the point of where you like taking acid. No, I've never, I've never done any okay. of that, man. I like, I'm just a drinker, man. That's okay. all I do, you know. On I'm to like, the I'm, next. Yeah. Then. So, but, but Hendrix to me is just. I mean, he's he he is. On otherworldly, bro. I mean, it's just like the greatest that ever, the greatest yeah. mind musically that I think has ever just, Innovative, it's so fr- oh, unbelievable. Improv, just like leaking, spewing. absurd. I uh, just absurd. Yeah. Okay. That's Hendrix, your one. my ace. Um, they don't even have to be in order. Well, but that is my ace. I know so, you wanted so to I, make I needed, sure. I, I needed to make sure that that was my ace. Hendrix, number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> Um, so uh yeah. so yeah H- hendrix um i'd say I- i'd say quest love is in my top five 
Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Just as, and I don't mean as like a drummer. I mean that's one aspect of yeah. of why he's in there. But like as a producer, as a musical mind, as a, I mean, as a human, just yeah. like w- what he contributes to the overall culture of art. Pretty overall, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, like we're, yeah. you know, like the Summer of Soul documentary that yeah. just came out is he produced that. You know what I mean? Directed and produced that okay, whole thing. Quest. Like so, that's what I mean. Quest is a, Quest is just one yeah, of those guys, man. Yeah. He's just. You know, uh, so I'd say Questlove, um, man, it's, see, you know, it's when you start to get to the last three that it gets really tough because there's so many people <sighs> that you're just like, so yeah, yeah, I should, I shouldn't, I shouldn't think too much. Um, I would say Marley. Yeah. Marley's on there I for me because, because Marley for me was like, I'm he, he, he played now. such a pivotal role, like at a, at a moment in time for me that like also, um, no Bil- wasted lyrics. Yeah, and it it built in the, a, a really important thing that actually is a, is a piece of what Still Gold attempts to try to do mm-hmm. all the time, which is to impart a message into music without being overbearing, being or preachy. overbearing or preachy, yeah. to try to get across something in a way that is totally in a lot in a lot of ways in a lot of ways fucking submersive uh, subversive you know what i mean it's yeah yeah, but that's what i mean it's just he's just to me he just he's a bigger he's he's just this bigger spirit than the music like he's bigger than a musician so i'd say marley has to be in there for me um we've got three yep that's three um let's see you know Hendrix, in, 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 Quest Love, Marley. Yeah. In recent years, um, in recent years, Bon Iver has been uh, immensely inspirational for me. Okay. At musically oh, speaking. Mama, yeah. He's just it's just like especially the, the more recent projects, like I mean I love all Wait, of the stuff. The, like, I can see the Pines of Dancing guy, is that him? Is, is he gonna see Pines of Dancing? I believe it's his, his lyrics are bizarre. Man. His lyrics are wild. If you've I ever read his lyrics, it. I'm like, I they, they, first of all, he says things I thought were totally different. When I like read them, I was like, <laughs> yeah, hey, that's oh, what he's saying? Wow, yeah. that's crazy. But just from a musical perspective, like the twenty two a million album is, in my opinion, musical masterpiece. It's just I don't know it like uh, that. Check that album you out. Think I'm, I telling, I'm telling you, bro, that album was mind blowing to me. Tell me, bro. I it's should. like, it, it just really, it, he really is, that album is just immaculate. From beginning to end, in my opinion, it's just immaculate. Uh, so 22 that's, a million, Bonnie well, Bear. That's four. That's four. Yep. And then, yeah. I'm going to grab a, another drink. Do you want one? Oh, I'm, I'm still working on this one. Right. I'm good. Thank you. Um, let's see. So, number five, man. Number five. Oh, it's the hardest one because it's the hardest one. I mean, you know, greatest dead top five, greatest dead or alive. Um, what do you have, sir? Hey. Well, so I guess I'm gonna put. It, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna put the Beatles because as right now, an artist. I'm gonna put the Beatles in that. I'm gonna put the Beatles in there. As an as a, as a unified collective, you know what I mean. I understand that's a little sort of cheat code because it's kind of like well, sure, no, you know, that's fine. but it, as a unit, the Beatles. Oh. And I, I say that because the Beatles um, also played a huge role for me at one point in my life, and, and and when I go back to them, they continue to be inspirational. Like they, there's something very freeing about them, and and what that's was something good for what you. was interesting about the Beatles was their ability to reinvent themselves while having a common thread all the way through which i think is a really unique thing there's not there's not as many artists that i can see that have had such a if you look at the beginning yeah. album to like the last you know, like, wait, what are like, they wait, talking about this now this band started there and ended up here it's mm. like kind of crazy yeah. um and had to do it with out modern technology and the help of like they were so innovative in the ways that they handled the recordings mm-hmm. and and and, 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 and they got and, their music to the world and 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 it it also is you know it's when i say the beatles i'm also saying all the people involved in producing the beatles records and creating cuz it was a sure, lot of you got to give a, love to the producers especially from your there's position there's a lot of innovation yep. that happened mm-hmm. there like you know like you know, taking these four tracks and dubbing them down and like you know syncing them all up and doing things that were just mind blowingly uh, groundbreaking for the time that i think there's something about the breaking of all the rules there and bending of all the rules and changing how it all works that i find to be just really like 
Maybe the Beatles should have been your number one. Well, it's no, because for me, Hendrix was like, he's just number one. That guy, I mean, he's the reason I play guitar. I mean, he's just, So the more surprising thing here to myself and to many of the viewers out there right now is in this top five, there's no act, there's no hip hop lyricist. Yeah, there's it, no. Uh, it, it's it's tough for me because there's it's, no Cool G rap up know, there. There's I know, no. I know. I know. KRS One. There's no. Well, that's Nas, why I asked. No there were no restrictions. And the no restrictions. There's no there's, restrictions. I'm just. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like because at the end of the day, all of the people I listed are in hip hop, and it's not the other way around. You feel me? Yes, so, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Like if you listen to hip hop, you'll get the Beatles. You'll get Bob Marley. You'll get Hendrix. Obviously, you get Questlove. You know what I mean? You get all yeah. of them. But it doesn't happen the other way around. And it's, and, Do you and, get one of those verses from Ghostface Kill that makes you want to cry out of the Beatles? <laughs> uh, it's what went on the past flashbacks when I was young. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. It's, um, it's hard because we're talking about just the very yeah, top yeah. five. You know what I mean? And 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 it's like, I got and, 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 and for me, it's it's just music is such a bigger thing than just one individual genre, right? You know what I'm I mean? I'm just saying, I'm surprised. Can I be surprised? Of course. All right. Of course, I'm a surprising individual, though. I'm highly surprising. <laughs> highly surprising. Uh, how about this? I don't think this will surprise me. Do you care about other people? Like in your day to day life, are you nice to people? Oh, I try to be, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I totally care about everyone. So you feel like, as a human, Mm -hmm. you actually create a more peaceful environment for those that you come across? I try to. I mean, you know, whether I achieve it is, you know, that's not up to me to say, but Mm -hmm. but I definitely try to. be nice to people. Oh yeah, man. I mean, I think like at the end of the day, like and you know, like and I have my days. You know, we all have our shit days, and like you know, and I'm I'm sure I've been a total dick to people, and I feel terrible yeah, about of it. Of course, but, but everybody um, has. They but say uh, they yeah, my 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 my, my goal you. is to uh, is to always try to be. I just you know I feel like we we all gotta we're all going through shit, you know, and yeah. and and uh, I try to have my experiences with people be positive ones you know what i mean can like you, that's can you do this for me yeah, yeah give me a recent example of where the situation didn't necessarily call for you to be so nice but you just were example oh, just to oh, not to, to give you a little pool to draw from you go to the gas station right. you get your little snicky snack snack <laughs> attack you <laughs> gotta run in there get some peanuts a cliff bar maybe some oj and naked juice you get up to the counter you could just put the stuff on the counter and say nothing the lady's gonna look up and go 284 and you're gonna put your money in. you don't have to say anything or and then you walk out or the same transaction occurs you put your stuff on the counter she looks up you're like hey how are you today yeah. she's like i'm good and then she starts ringing in the stuff and you're like wow that necklace is killer. I love it. And she's like, thank you so much. And you're like, oh, of course. Have a great day. And you walk out and she's like, she, she's not like not thinking about it, but she feels better. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, you do that? I, I, think, I think that for me. Um, I only want to know what it's like for you. I want your opinion. Well, I, th- I think that what it comes down to is I, I can remember the times that they happen to me more than I can remember the times that I've done them. Because, like, I just try to. Because you do them naturally. I, well, saying. no, it's just, I'm just saying I try to, I try to, like, it's, I try to just do my best at being friendly and, and, and being outgoing. If I was the clerk, all right? Listen yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, if yeah, I was yeah. the clerk and you came in and you bought yourself a Slurpee when you left, would I feel. I would a hope little so. bit more heightened I than I did prior to. I would to. hope so, but I can. Rem- so, so what I guess I, what I'm trying to say is, I remember there was an incident I had recently. Yep. And it was uh, it was at it was at a fish counter getting just getting a I piece of fish. Fish concert. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> never been to one of those. Was a big fish fan for years, but no, no never went there. Uh, no, so there's at a fish counter. I'm ordering whatever fish I ordered that day, and, yeah. and I had this exchange <laughs> with this person, and it was exactly what you're saying. It was one of these moments where I was with my fiance, and and we both left there just being like, wow, like that was such a nice ex- like th- that, blissful exchange. There was n- no reason for that exchange to be as nice as it was. It was literally like, hey, can I get that fillet of fish? And boom, boom, boom. You sure know what I mean? Yeah, like, but it was you. this whole like 
we had a whole conversation about what how we were going to do the thing and like, how the weather was and the, the guy was like oh man i can't wait to get off my thing and i was like man when you get out there you're gonna love it the weather's gonna be great and so i like i just maybe you know what i'm talking maybe about. he felt yes. Like, hey, that was great, but I know that I felt great because yep. of how that person was. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know that that person felt great. Cause I hope they did. You know. <laughs> so See, I guess you know I, what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's beautiful. It I'm was happy a beautiful exchange. It was great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And those things stand out to me because I do feel like there is this. Uh, you know, we live in a world that's very transactional and very quick and very fast paced. Yes. And uh, I think that there is something to be said for. Um, f- for friendliness and kindness that, uh, and I get sucked into my own heady world and I'm juggling 8 million things. I'm so bad about like getting text messages on, like while I'm, yeah, like, you're not good at dude, that. I'm terrible yeah. about yeah. it. I'm like the worst. We can you know? release that to the world. He's not so good with the response time. <laughs> so it's, it's really bad. And I'm like, and then I'm like, and I'm like distracted and oh, it's like, oh my God. So I'm, I, I'm just, I'm not good with, um, Sometimes I'm not great at being in the moment, and I'm trying to be better about yeah. that being present and in the moment. But I will say that these exchanges that I've had, these like spontaneous fish market exchanges that there are like, is. I'm like, man, that just that's it. That, that just could made be the my title of the next album. Fish, fish market, market exchanges. Exchange. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's a good one, actually. I like it. Yeah. So, as we go from these joyous little situations, let's transition to: Is there things that you're afraid of? You have fears out, not just in business, in life. Yeah. What, what keeps snakes. you awake? Snakes. <laughs> Hate snakes. <laughs> like, and in, in the actual, like, humans that are low life snakes and lies. No, like actual snakes. I snakes hate snakes. On, yeah, I, 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 I cannot say, I'm so petrified of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep the grass cut, like Jada sure Kiss says, sure then, do, right? Sure do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, like, uh, I have a really big fear actually i guess it's kind of connected to uh to 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 what we were just talking about but i have a huge fear of of disappointing people that's a really big thing for me is like i i have this um like you get anxious about yeah i do i really do uh i have this thing about like i don't ever want to be the reason that someone feels anger or pain or disappointment or anything or you know and i just i hate if i'm the cause of anyone's pain it like really eats me alive like weighs i have a heart it weighs on me in a heavy way so i will often go out of my way to make sure that i feel like i've rectified a situation if if i feel like so something, something I, I did there. something wrong or something didn't happen you know yeah. like i often am like i gotta make sure this is really right so that i can sleep all right because i just need to be able to like sleep yeah yeah <laughs> of course you don't go sleep, to bed you know? at night i gotta be all able these to things it. running around and, and i there. really i really just want to feel like I, I i my biggest fear is having someone feel like i you know i didn't do right by them you know what i mean I, that's not i, I want to my reputation is a really important thing to me yeah and i really want people to feel as though i always was fair i was always level-headed i always you know respected them and and uh you know, and obviously, you know, I run a business, and so it's not about getting trampled on. It's simply about being like yeah, straightforward, being right and honest, and, be, and being right and right. You know, so with me for the value that it holds yeah. in your world, your reputation, it's in a high place. Well, I appreciate I think that. You're a I good mean, guy. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, <laughs> and the people that I know that talk about you. Yap, yap, yap. Yeah. This, they say nice things. Oh, that's good. I'm yeah, you thought because I said I like yap, talking, yap. You like how I kind of dangled it a little bit? That was a little teaser. Yeah, it gets me nervous. He's like, like where's he going to go from here? People are saying bad things about me. Oh, mm. my God, I have anxiety. <laughs> um, so who who are you ultimately like? Is this someone you're like itching to work with? Like, yo, I want to work with. Oh, man, yeah, I want to do, do this track with Joyner right now. Yeah, there's there's people. Who? There's people. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm there, a surprise. Man. People you. are I'm watching. Surpri- trust me. <laughs> I'm a surpri- well, okay, so I'll give you some like some layups, some some names you yeah. won't be so uh, so shocked by. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so I would love I would love to work with. Um, uh, Killer Mike, I you know I yeah. do, I just think Killer Mike is you such a Killer Mike? oh come on Killer Mike kind of an beast. unexpected answer. No, I'm being real. I'll run the jewels are brilliant. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, People and, want, and, that's and not LP a normal well, answer. You know, I mean, uh, you know, but yeah, Killer Mike. I just, yeah. I just think Killer Mike's a beast, man. Okay, I just I love, love, I love, I love everything he's about. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess bucket Me list, too. like bucket list MCs. If I was to run off a list of bucket list MCs, um, I mean Kendrick's obviously in that mix. He's just. Kendrick is to me one of the most brilliant 
hip hop artists we've had. Because you love like, him, not because he's ultra famous. This is what I'm saying. No, I love Kendrick yes. as, an, right. as, 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 as as a musical. Um, I really is. A, I'm gonna forget being a rap artist or a hip hop artist. As a musical artist, he's yeah. bringing something that is just I just haven't seen in a long time. So I'd say Kendrick. I'd say Anderson Pac. I'd say uh, Killer Mike. I would say. Oh man, Andre 3000, um, Yo, like buddy. like 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 crazy crazy yeah. crazy. Um, That'd be a uh, great ch- session. Ch- ch- those are like some off the top quick yeah, hip hop hip, hip, hip hop names. But I would really also love to work with Ben Gibbard from Death Cab for Cutie. That's one of my favorite bands, yep. and I think Ben Gibbard is just brilliant. Actually, I think the whole band Death Cab is just fantastic. I, I love them all. But uh, I would. You li- gotta do one of these collabs with like Travis Barker. Can you like you see these things going I'm on? I'm like, guy. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not actually super hip to the Travis Barker like collabs yeah, stuff okay. he's doing. He's doing what he's doing a whole series of them. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. I'm not Interesting. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, playing the drums and someone else is doing right. the other well, I've parts. Seen, I've seen some of that. Yeah, he's and you know he's, he's, he's <laughs> you've seen it. <laughs> I've seen some of that. That's my person. I've it wasn't meant some. to be negative. It just looked that way because <laughs> I can't dance. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, you know, so uh, this, blah, 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 who else? That's I don't good. know. I know there's, there's there's some, I like some of the people. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So but. how about this? This is a this is a good question. As a producer, when you're sitting there in the studio, yep. you got your artist in the booth, mm-hmm. you push and record, here we go, they do their thing. How important and how practiced is honesty? Are you in a position with some of the artists right, that you're right, working right, right. with yeah, I got you. where you will say, yo... Slain, I love you, buddy. But that line is not is not well, doing what you think it's doing. So I think I think one of the main things that that is super important being a producer is under, in under, developing and understanding your different languages, right? Yeah. Like so, and and those have to differ with each artist because each artist is his own relationship, yeah. and each artist receives information different ways yeah so you really have to learn the ins and outs of what like what because one thing for me that's really key is like in in critiquing or criticizing somebody it has to be constructive if it's not constructive then all you're doing is destructive which is like then where are we going there's nothing that's not helpful you know like you're like yo slain i know you you got one better let's hit it again you you gotta you gotta just find a way yeah exactly like and 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 the rapport is different that's dope let's get it this time the rapport is different with each artist that's what i mean so the way i talk to slain is not how i'm gonna talk to mo and it's not how i'm gonna talk to the 18 year old singer zola that i'm working with and you know the you have to develop your your own set of language with each artist and like figure out what it is that will help them get to the place that you need them ultimately to get to. Um, so for me, it's like always making sure that if there is going to be a criticism or a critique, that there is then the suggestion of where to take it or how to take yeah. it or something so that it's there's always like, somewhere to build and go, you know, like uh, it's never going to be like, nah, it yeah. just doesn't work. Yeah. It's like, like that's not helpful. Like, like, well, you want to go out to eat? He's like, yes. Where do you want to go? I don't know. You want to go here? No. You want to go here? No. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Yeah, it's exactly. Not that like, exactly. Because yeah. that's a dead end. That's a dead end street, mm-hmm. when, especially when it comes to creativity, because it's like, you know, you, the vulnerability piece is so high. Like, like even to the most seasoned artist, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know, we're, we're in the studio course, trying we're all to. We're humans. Yeah, we're just we're like humans. Little, like, that's what I'm saying. Fragile like, you know, you, you look, beings. You're like, oh, well, Slain tours the world and da 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 da. Who cares? Slain he's a human. Come, he's got a brain. And he's like, yeah, he's he like, goes to the bathroom. I, I, there's all the things. You know, he's like, a dude, regular I'm, guy, I'm, I'm writing about donuts. something that's real personal to me on this one, yeah. or whatever, or I'm gonna try something new that I haven't done before because we're all trying to like expand and yeah. grow as artists, you know, and and widen our horizons. So it's like he, you want to take risks and you want to feel comfortable to be able to take risks in the studio with your producer. Yeah. And your producer you, creates you know, that comfort zone. Is, that's the whole thing. It's it's producing the entire environment, you know. So it's it's really that's an, a hugely important part of the whole process. Look at this, right? Mm-hmm. Two reasons. Two. Two. That I asked you to come here today. Oh, okay. All right? Cool. Okay? Yeah. So the first reason yeah. we've touched on, I completely respect and admire people that have an idea in their head and they act upon this idea and take it and turn it into a reality. Right, right, right. We have the options to do anything with yep. our lives. 
and we can look at things like, oh, that's what other people do, or we can act on them. So yeah. I respect you. As I look at you from afar, we just, this is like our second time ever yeah, meeting yeah. in person. Yeah. As I sit over here and I see what you got going on and your name has popped up in the Boston things that I'm with, I'm like, ah, oh, dude. I, I respect the fact I that you it. took something that would have otherwise not existed, the whole archetype, all the music that's been created, mm -hmm. the studio space, all these things would just be non-existent if mm -hmm. you didn't act upon your ideas. You could have gone another direction, but you had a passion and you followed it. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, not only you, is it a beautiful thing for you as a human that you're doing something that you love, but it actually inspires other people. It does it on a regular basis. Thank you. You bro. might not know. You're probably not aware of the people that do look up to you. There are kids out there in the Boston music scene looking up, and they're seeing you, and you are an inspiration I to people in that, that way. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you. First reason. Thank you. As we move on to the second one here. Bro, this is life. We all have these unique situations, consequences, consequences, positions we're in that can cause us to act in a certain way. Yep. We choose how we act in a situation, mm -hmm. though, at the end of it all. Totally. And what you're saying to me and what I've seen from you is that you're acting out a life that is full of genuine kindness, goodness, and positivity. Trying. You don't go out there and punch <laughs> people in the face for living. No, you don't, don't do purposely hurt people. Yeah. You're actually doing the opposite. You yeah. don't have to do that. And you're choosing to be a good person. And when you feel that you're not, you're acknowledging it and trying to better it. This is beautiful. Thank not you, you, you might think it's the norm, but it is not. You're, at, you're a good person in the world. That's a beautiful thing. That's the second reason. Thank you, bro. That's that means beautiful. a lot. That really means no, a lot. No, it's real. And this always leads me to this. As grown men, people looking at each other as mm -hmm. adults, compliments, these kinds of like actual emotional acknowledgments don't happen. It's true. I'm so comfortable to say this to you because you're that person that understands the position that I'm coming from in saying this. I see what you're doing. It makes me happy. Also, the fact that you're a nice guy, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you, bro. That's it. I Here's your roses. That, Smell them like we're that on drink real, champs. I, yeah, that's like the nicest thing. Yeah. I, that was because a really Because people don't crazy. do A lot of your friends Man. feel the same way that I do. These yeah. People just don't say it anymore. They that's don't say up, the dude. things. That that's really what I'm nice, saying. Man. So I'm here representing that. a lot of your people in saying that. that. Man. I Smell that. the roses. Thank we're not going to wait until you're gone to talk about how good you were and how great it was that you did your thing. Thank you, It's all right to say this to people smell the roses i uh, appreciate yeah, it. yeah man that's so nice. after our super emotional point in the show <laughs> let's now move on to what we call fast fun and not so smart all right <laughs> okay. i'm gonna tell you why I'm, it's I, called I, this i think i'm at least fast and not so smart i'll see Here how fun we go. I am. so it's fast because i'm gonna make it seem like something fast happening right, here we go. oh okay. my god i'm gonna talk fast i'm gonna clap my hands it's fun because we have fun all right why wouldn't we right. it's not so smart because you're not gonna think about the answers it's okay to just say the things i'm okay. not gonna create like these clips of anything making you look bad okay it's not so smart because you're just gonna say the thing all right so here okay. we go yeah it's fast fun and not so smart we with the archetype. Here we go. <laughs> skiing or surfing? Oh, man. I, I skied for years, so, so I love skiing. It's skiing, and here we are now. Prime rib or kale salad? <laughs> Prime rib. Look at you, boy. <laughs> the best recording software that exists. I, I hate it, but it is Pro Tools. It's Pro Tools, I do man. Hate it. <laughs> I'm with you, yeah. If you had to eliminate one state in the United States of America, what state oh. would it be oh, the archetype man. wants to eliminate the state of? Oh, man. I, uh, that I actually don't know. Uh, Not so smart part. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. You uh, can't even do it. I can't even do it because there's somewhere I love in almost every state. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, you gonna do it? You gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? I, I, it's a long. I don't know. It's a long North Dakota. Across. North Dakota. <laughs> Simply because he knows no one there. He thinks, yeah. but a lot of people are a little upset with them right now. <laughs> North Dakota. It's pretty all right. I just. It's pretty all right. Easy to say for me. I'm not eliminating uh, states like. over here. Here we go. Favorite Boston producer slash beat maker besides yourself. Who is oh, it? Favorite, Killing so, them. Sorry. Favorite Boston producer slash beat maker. Like, like, I'm talking okay. about making the beats. Yeah. Who? Uh, Besides you, Light, who is it? Lightfoot. 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 Okay, I love it. That's, that's I thought you said like what? Um, Lightfoot, my man. Here we go now. We carry on to 
Are you happy with your position in life? Scale of one to ten, give it a number. One, six and a half, nine. Go six ten. and a half. Six and a half, boy. Six and a half. Oh, man, we need to spend more time together. You'll move that quickly up to a nine. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. Here six we and go. A half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was the last time you actually slept outside? It like, could be a tent, shoot. but uh, outside, not man. a van, not a camper. Oh, tent side. outside. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like when you're hearing the crickets doing yeah, their thing. Uh, Maybe there was please. a little jackal scratching at your tent. Dude, that's like a hammock in your backyard. 50, 20 years. What? I'm serious. 15, maybe? You've been sleeping within walls for the last 20 years? Wait, in a tent? Maybe Anywhere. Give me even I'm in a car outside, dude. Not even in a car. I'm trying to think. Are you, this is outrageous. I know. It's crazy. Actually, that, That's wild. Please I'm consider like, the thin walls around you. I know. It's crazy. I hadn't thought about that. That's a wild question. This guy hasn't <laughs> slept outside. <laughs> In 20 years? I'm trying to think. Years? I'm trying to think if I have. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I have. Mind blown. I I, my mind I, is blown. Oh, so here's the thing is I don't nap. That's so, fine. It's fine. So, but not even a camping yeah, trip? So, 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 yeah. Not even like a calling to no, sleep see, outside? I haven't, I haven't gone camping in forever. Natureless boy. Know, not I nature know. boy. I know. Natureless boy. Uh, yeah. Here we go now. Uh, wow. Carry on. That's my crazy. mind is blown. <laughs> when it comes to having drinks, is it one or is it 10? What's your night? Oh, it's about five or six. Five or six. That's probably a little something going, but we're not losing yeah, control. Yeah, I try not to lose. Once yeah, we start feeling we but are, we slow like down. The one, it's like the one, the one calls for the second one. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a few. The final question. Yes. A fast one and not so smart with the archetype. You glad you came here today? Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. So, thanks for playing. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Please. I'm not a game show host. <laughs> My game is not that good. <laughs> but it was pretty, it was pretty where, fun. Where, where, where's the showcase? What did yeah, I win? I don't know. <laughs> um, you won that gift oh, I gave you earlier. Right there. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> that's right. I was supposed to give you that after the game. Yeah, that, that's what you should do. <laughs> Let's do this type of thing here. Um, how do we connect with the archetype on the social media jams? Oh, it's just, it's so it's, I spell my name weird, but it's the archetype on everything, like literally. Twitter, but, Facebook. But is it just archetype? The archetype. The archetype. And it's A R C I T Y P E. That's it. Arc I yep. Arc I type. Yep. And that right? you know, it's funny because people are like, Why'd you why'd you spell it that way? And why the only not? reason I spelled it that way was so that I didn't have to compete against the proper spelling on Google. Mm -hmm. That was really it. <laughs> it's Boom. like if I can just carve out enough of this spelling i own that. i will own my little corner of the internet and it won't I'll also I, I own the corner of people compete. that can't spell exactly yeah. boom easy i love it um so we have that instagram facebook everything. they're all the it's same it's all the same i'm on the same thing on everything Is there a youtube situation you got going not for on? me no i don't have one no. i mean if you google no. me you'll find stuff or if I did. you I youtube found search stuff. me you'll find some things but yeah. you know i mean i don't have my own channel let's talk about the people you want to give love to as we wind out here Archetype. Yeah. Who, who, I'm not, it doesn't have to be music industry. Cool oh, okay, people. yeah. I'm talking about who you want to give some love to. Your homeboy, Pablo. We gave him some love yeah. already. Shout Who's out like, Pablo. I haven't talked to him in a while. Who you getting coffee with in the morning? Who's your people? Like your regular day-to-day -day life yeah. people that need some well, so, love. I mean, you know, some my fiance first and foremost. She, she's, Who's she? Her name is Azure. Azure? And she's fantastic. We went this far without talking about you, Azure? I, I would have steered it differently had I known. <laughs> 2020 Azure. hindsight. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, yeah, so sh shout out to her. She has to deal with me and all my craziness on a regular yep. basis. So, and, and my whole life. She lives lifestyle. in the house where you punch the she, wall. She lived in that house. She watched me do it. So, uh, yeah. Did she laugh a little bit after? She did you guys get a laugh out of it? She probably did get a laugh. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, you know, it, it took a couple days, but yeah. She's like, you might. Need to talk to someone. Yeah. You know, maybe you could talk to someone. Yeah, maybe, like, maybe, right? Yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah, her, uh, my family. You know, my mom, dad, and my sister. They they all have put up with me for a good long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my 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 best friend Matt. I haven't seen him a lot recently because his schedule and mine. He lives on the other side of the state. You know, I love that guy though. Matt and who? Matt Mueller. He's a he's Matt a Mueller. he's a uh, uh, English professor and he's great. He's just a he's, great guy. You know, all these you know? professors. Yeah, it's Hold interesting. On, can actually. I give love That's... to Tim Hall? Did we do that? Yeah, yet? Good. well, we, yeah, we got it. Well, then I was getting to the band okay. next. It was gonna All be right, right. Still Gold, my band, you know. Yeah. So it's Mo Pope and Christopher Talkin, Jonathan Allman, and Tim Hall, yes. you know. And um, 
and uh, my guy Slain, and and all the guys at the bridge, all my people there, because they're, they're they're the guys who hold it down for me. So, Mertz, Alex, uh, Javi, uh, Ryan, Ostrom, my business sort of business partner Owen Curtin. He's the guy I started it with. You know, he kind of on the wings. Yeah, we did this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, everybody oh, over there, so Emily. Love. Uh, you know, all them, so, you know, just all the people that help me out. Well. It takes a village I, to raise an archetype, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it shout sure out, does. Shout out to my and village. And that's the lesson. This guy <laughs> could not do it by himself. Absolutely. I really couldn't, so mm. I appreciate everybody. I've had a good time. Me too. Yeah. Thank you. That's it, man. I really appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Good. I think I'm ready to, to bring this thing down to a close sweet let's do it so that's the archetype this is offering something my name is michael bernia you know i love you for watching the show once again a whole lot of love to our super sweet support system at enjoy your life brand riverwalk brewing company higher education music and arts festival we love you love you love you for watching the show you you could do anything with your time but here you are doing this pretty incredible and we appreciate that Look at his smile. Look at that. I don't even know where to look. But yeah. <laughs> I'll look at them all. Yeah, that's it, y'all. It's the <laughs> end of the show. We'll check in next time. Peace, love, and all the good things. Yeah.